Good afternoon, everybody. Phil Simons here with Columbia Grain and your post-September World Agriculture Supply and Demand Estimate Report Recap. Well, let's go ahead and dive right into it. But quite honestly, the report this morning was really pretty milk toast, if you will, uh, and as the numbers really didn't change much at all. But I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you. We're going to navigate over to our favorite website, ColumbiaGrain.com. And in the upper right hand corner, we can go to the producer solutions tab that'll take us over to a producer solutions link. But we did have the September World Agriculture Supply and Demand Estimate Report, the WASI report, uh, come out here this morning. And quite honestly, it was really pretty muted. There wasn't a whole heck of a lot of changes here when we compare it to uh, the last month's numbers that we had uh, on tap. But if we take a look at to start out here, Really 23, 24 crop, we did see a slight reduction here uh, in ending stocks for corn and beans. Uh, but when we look at the ending stocks for 24, 25 crop for corn, wheat, and soybeans, you know, realistically a slight, slight reduction uh, in corn and in soybeans and really unchanged in wheat and really not much to, uh, to really dive into, quite honestly. In similar fashion, when we look at the potential production uh, for the U.S. Uh, in terms of corn and beans for new crop that's coming at us, really absolutely 0% change uh, from where we were last month. But that's for percentage change. There were some slight revisions here and there, uh, but realistically, really no big, big changes there. So really not a whole heck of a lot to dive into here uh, today. But when we look at the world ending stocks for, uh, for new crop for uh, corn, we did see a slight reduction there down about 1% uh, in the world. So again, just something to continue to monitor as we move forward. Uh, the other thing that we did have really before the report came out this morning, uh, there were some uh, reports uh, of a uh, Russian missile that actually struck a Ukraine ship um, that did give a little bit of life to the wheat, corn, and soybean market. Uh, to begin, but then, you know, things started to kind of cool off once we actually saw the numbers and, and realistically didn't see uh, too, too many fireworks here today. But when we take a look at uh, the numbers that we continue to see from the, um, from the reports, uh, corn yields, uh, when we look at corn yields in the U.S., at least the potential here, uh, we're actually up a half a bushel to the acre from the, uh, from the August number, uh, bringing us up to 1386 uh, bushel to the acre potential. We look specifically at North Dakota. Uh, North Dakota was up two bushel to the acre, coming in at 146 bushel per acre potential. Anyway, for new crop uh, corn yields. We look at soybeans. Uh, same thing there it was really unchanged from last month's numbers at 53.2 bushel to the acre. There were some slight adjustments, you know, by state. We did see North Dakota increase there as well uh, by two bushel to the acre, and now sitting. At a projection of 38 bushel to the acre. Uh, but when we look at the historical uh, yields for corn and soybeans in the U.S., you know, right now, the, the last uh, number that we have from a historical standpoint for the highest yields we've seen in corn uh, were, were actually last year, which came in at 177.3 bushel to the acre. So if we realize our 183.6 bushel uh, potential yield, that will definitely be a new record. Uh, for uh, average U.S. corn yields um, in that market in that regard. And when we look at soybean, same thing there. Um, the, the last highest U.S. soybean yield that we had was actually back in 2016. That came in at 52.1 bushel to the acre. So this year, uh, right now, the USDA is estimating 53.2. So if realized, again, that would be a, a, a record-setting yield for U.S. soybeans. So just something to, again, factor into um, you know a marketing decision in terms of what we could anticipate to see going forward uh, for prices as we continue to move closer and closer to harvest. Uh, but again, when we look at the actual balance sheets uh, from today, uh, there were just some really slight, slight changes uh, in soybeans. Net on net, the carry out from month to month uh, was actually uh, down 10 million uh, bushels for soybeans. Actually, this should say um, uh, September and August. I do apologize for that. Uh, and then again, when we look at the corn balance sheet, we do see uh, that the September numbers were actually, for carryout anyway, for U.S. corn was down 16 million bushels. We did see a slight reduction in the carry-in. Our production was increased by about 39 million, giving our total supply down about 16 million from, uh, from last month's numbers. And in uh, the wheat market, there was actually zero 
uh, net zero change there in wheat market as well in terms of the overall balance sheets. So again, you know, today we did see a lot of knee-jerk reactions, you know, primarily coming from the, the news of the, uh, the Ukraine ship that was actually struck by a Russian missile. So that did give us a little bit of life uh, to the markets this morning. So again, just really highlighting the fact that the importance of having your orders out there and working and realistically looking out for new crop. Um, when we look at the wheat complex, you know, specifically, you know, we have seen uh, new crop futures for wheat uh, rally, you know, close to 60 cents uh, from the most recent lows. And we're still holding on to close to about a 60 cent uh, gain from where we were, where we had been, you know, here just a couple of weeks ago. When you look at uh, new crop, so these corn, we're up about 20 cents uh, from where we were at the most recent lows and still holding on to close to around a 20 cent gain. And soybeans uh, for new crop beans, for no beans, we're still holding on to close to about a 60 cent uh, gain from our most recent lows there as well. So again, just continue to look um, you know, out for new crop and take advantage of the opportunities when they're there. So be sure to get your orders out there and working. When we look at, again, new crop wheat, right now we are seeing uh, close to a 30, you know, 35, maybe even a 40 cent premium uh, for some of our accumulator contracts. So be sure to get a hold of your local um, merchandisers and buyers. Uh, take a look at all the different opportunities and alternatives that we have in our Columbia Producer Solutions platform. Get your orders out there and working. Take advantage of these knee-jerk reactions as they can come fast and furious. Uh, other than that, we're going to go ahead and wrap everything up for the day here again. Uh, again, hope um, everybody has a great week and actually starting tomorrow. Other than that, we will talk with you later. Thank you. Have a great day. Yeah.